<laughs> um, hi, I'm Ruth. Um, whoa. Um, hi, um, I'm Ruth. I'm here today as Exit. And I will be here on Wednesdays once that game's back up and running, whenever it does. Um, on as Maeve, I said Wednesdays, right? Yep. I'm so spacey. Um, this will be a fun game. And I never prepare for these, so it's always atrocious. Um, well, I prepare myself mentally, but I need to write it down. Um, and Sundays. Uh, when we do have sessions on Sundays as Anya. And that's about it. Yeah, Sundays is best than the devil you know. It's a great show, very colorful characters, despite being gothic horror. Um, and lastly, because I always make her go first, magic. All right. So, uh, hi, I play magic. Uh, my name is Sarah. You can find me over on Tangor Productions doing things eventually i'm kind of working on something that i thought was going to be small it's not small it's very big um and it's going to be coming out later this year so when i can talk more about it i'm very excited too um you can also find me here uh when the wednesday game comes back as crimson rave uh you can find me on thursday running the Fool's Gold campaign, King's Pyrite, and uh, when the Sunday game comes back as Lily O'Connell. I think that is everything. Yep. Uh, Cyberpunk Red is what we're playing tonight. Um, it was written by Mike Pond Smith and was published by Our Talsorian Games. Our VTT is roll 20. Character art is done through Hero Forge, except we don't have the images for it. That's okay. Um, Kevin told me about that, and I totally forgot. Um, Pixabay is where we got the background images, and we can thank one of our resident artists, Thunderscape7, for making it background art. <laughs> Oops, then do. So with that out of the way, let's get into the game. We will start with Kraken tonight. Okay. <laughs> Kraken, you had a fun ride in the back of Sheila. Uh, a nice nap. A nice nap. Um, the bathtub chooch uh, did what it needed to, and it sedated you for most of the trip. You met a bunch of old nomads at a chop shop, and uh, a fun painter. Who yep, got to meet Rembrandt. I vibe on a solo level. Yeah. You got to meet one of the weirdest NPCs I've ever thought of. Um, a slightly unhinged painter. Uh, and with Sheila in the hands of these guys to be uh, to get a <laughs> I was going to say an 80s um, prog makeover. rock makeover um they grabbed you out of the back of the truck and um Shane and Red Death started taking you back to the precipice or back to the precipice when you remembered you had a suitcase. This suitcase was ticking suspiciously. And um you remember that you had to take it to a specific building and leave it in the lobby. Uh, so the three of you uh, make your way down to this building. It's a uh, medium high rise, not downtown sized, but large enough that you could tell it doesn't hold just one corporation. These complexes have been popping up all over the place since the time of the red began. Lots of little neocorps renting out space from other little neocorps who work for a different neocorp. You get the idea. It's shell companies all the way down. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you get there, you guys realize that you don't actually know where this place is located. 
um, Red Death peels off um, saying he's going to look for an exit in case things go sideways because, you know, it's you guys. Things always go sideways. Yes. And Sheen grabs the suitcase from... Actually, we'll say he was holding it the whole time. Uh, and says he'll um, go distract the receptionist while you try and find a way to figure out where where you're going. Yes. Uh, I think I want to try to finagle some uh, pass passcode, like maybe try to be a pizza boy, or maybe I I got sixty nine percent of uh, uh, data from uh, an an agent of our mm. chestnut. Like, That's right. You did yes. uh you did steal Chester's phone at one point. Yes, and, and uh, no, normally Kraken <laughs> would uh, be morally opposed to do such a thing to his neighbor. But <laughs> right now, after his little joyride with black lace, his morals are going down the drain and he kind of doesn't think about it. He thinks yeah. crime crime is, is cool. Yeah, it doesn't bother you because he's a corpo. Corpos are the enemy. They're the enemies of communism, yes. literally. So what I want from you is... Let me just see here. Going through the skills so I can find something for you to roll. Because I'm already making stuff up, folks. Um, give me a technique security tech. Security, okay. Yeah. Last time I rolled this, it went horribly bad. But now that he ha still had a few drinks, maybe it will be better. Twenty-four. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. You get through the encryption of the portion that you have downloaded, um, and. Chester's business life is possibly the most boring thing you've ever experienced in your entire life. There's spreadsheets, there's requisition forms that haven't been approved, there's snarky emails from superiors, and um, a string of back and forth like if it wasn't, if they weren't both Giraffa corporate email addresses, you would think that these were two kids fighting on Xbox Live. Um, it's, it's just heck. biting comments like, fuck you, you know, you're never going to get this project done. Hope you like the thing I gave you. Um, and then a picture Reckon, of the... Checking if, it, if he didn't switch on some comedy show. <laughs> like... From yeah, from a scream sheet or the office, but no, it's in just the, as life. In the midst of all of that garbage, and it is literally gigabytes of garbage. Uh you know, useful social engineering if you were into that kind of stuff. But uh mm. what you do find at the end is there is a passcode for the elevator. Um, normally it takes a card, but the email you found talks about the new, uh, key, um, keypad and it gives you the password for it and it only goes to their floor, to, you know, for security reasons. So when you go into the the lobby the main Be, before uh, he would go to the lobby he would change his clothes like he would put on the red suit but he would take off his cufflinks okay um give me a personal grooming check that's okay. in social i believe the, the, this will yes. be fun yep <laughs> this will go on a video. This is exactly how this goes. Uh, okay. I put one point in that, but 
Das ist so schön. It's fine, it'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, personal game. Oh, no. Six. Okay. <laughs> you look like hot garbage. Like your your suit is um it's wrinkled as hell. You sa- you somehow managed to wrinkle a wrinkle proof suit. Um, there's a stain from there's the, a stain uh, that you're not Greece. sure where you're not sure where that's from. You missed a button <laughs> like on the suit. It looks terrible, bud. Um But he thinks he looks amazing. You think you look great. <laughs> Um, I look like uh, Sheen gives you a video. look, but he's like, "All right, you ready to do this?" Of course I am. All right, I'll keep the secretary distracted. You, uh, and he hands you the the suitcase. You get up and do what we need to do. Okay, Kraken takes the suitcase. Okay. Yeah. Um. So you walk into the um you walk into the lobby and it's you know your standard yes. standard lobby you know you you could almost tell what website they bought the chairs from uh Kraken would start singing 9 to 5 <laughs> of, of Dolly Parton to yeah. get in the mood um when you the one thing you do notice is off to the one side, Attic and Dead Man suit with a suitcase walks into the lobby. That's a start for a noir film. Um you walk into the lobby and there's a receptionist at the desk off to the side. Um as you make your way towards the elevators, she stands up. She's like um, excuse me, sir. And before she gets to do anything more than that, Shane just starts talking her ear off about a complaint from Human Resources and how his reputation's on the line. You know, what, what kind of, you know, secure, you know, what kind of transport company is this? You hired me for a job. I did the job. You know, what's going on? And he's just just bum rushing her with yeah. bullshit. Um, to, to add a fuel to fire, maybe I could roll stealth. <laughs> if we do, go yeah, back. actually, I was I was going to ask for a, for a roll stealth. If yeah, if you're trying to be sneaky, give me that. See what happens. He would, would try to be sneaky in his own special way. Uh, where where body, it's in body. Body yes. Uh, it's okay still you rolled another six you bumped into the security guard um you think you were being super slick and you look back to make sure shane's got her sufficiently distracted and he has you know he's definitely positioned his body to block you um as he's like just full on he's arm talking he's you know throwing the the nomad uh Way um, metaphors that don't make sense to anybody yeah. but a nomad <laughs> and just completely completely bamboozled her and he wanted the hell to go back but it's funny. you were a little too focused on making sure she didn't see you, that you didn't see the security guard you bumped into. Hey, uh, what do you think you're doing? Hello, uh, cam- no, no, not camerate, friend, corporate friend, yeah. Uh, hello, I'm just uh, clocking into uh, my schedule of work day. You don't look like anybody who's walked through here before. Uh, I, I, I just uh, got a position in the mail room. Uh, the, the lowest, lowest r- rang, and, and I bought the suit, and I brought my suitcase, and... 
Give me a, um, I'm going to say social conversation role or okay. unless you can, um, unless you can argue something else. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Social conversation. Yeah. It's, it's just what it should be. Uh, <laughs> three points. See if we get another well, maybe six. persuasion. Persuasion? Yeah, yeah, let's go with persuasion. I'm trying to persuade him that I'm I'm starting my corporate life. Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. Thirteen. Right. Well, I'm gonna follow you up there. Because of course. It it would be a big help. I'm kind of lost. I'm I'm starting my new life with Giraffe Corporation, mm -hmm. and and it's it's wonderful opportunity. You know, I always loved giraffe giraffes even as a kid because they have such a long uh, necks and they look like a construction machine, which Mother Nature made which then died, which then was brought back uh, by another corporation. But our yeah, corporation He's, he's not better. listening at this point. He's just like, Jesus. Um, <laughs> give me an awareness perception roll, though. Okay. I'm just kind of curious to see. Yeah. Will, I, <laughs> will I perceive something or not? It's awareness. One moment. Uh, 24. He's Argent Key. Uh, Argent. That's it's, the... It's um, the gang. That's that... the, the, the private military corp that's been oh, yeah. involved with uh, Magic's parents. Oh. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm thinking if Kraken would think about that. I'm, I think you, that you recognize Kraken recognizes the logo. He remembers. Remember the guy that shot ma the the time that Red Death shot Magic. Yes, <laughs> that was Argent Key. I I think yeah. he would remember that Argent Key had black lace and that here it was fucking with them. Yes. That's all yes, he would definitely remember here and and his little goblins. Um, he wouldn't know about the kid, you know, the kids, but he would know that here was uh, playing some jokes on them. Yeah, counting two. Uh, so yeah. as you, um, he sort of like, kind of points you to the elevators. He follows you, uh, in. And kind of just sort of waits. Yeah. Uh, did they tell Kraken where he should leave the briefcase? Um. You remember the highway telling you to leave it in their reception area? It doesn't matter where. Oh, and so I'm out of the reception now you're you were in the lobby of the building itself you haven't reached their floor oh. he's waiting for you in the elevator he's waiting for you to do so something. Uh, kraken would uh, walk in in the elevator and he would try to use the code that he got from uh, the cell phone the code seems to take an agonizingly long time to finalize like you press it you're just waiting you can see the guard you know you, you feel like you can see him behind you as he's got his hand on his assault rifle Kraken would just shrug that's the one they gave him that's the one they gave him <laughs> um and but it does go click green and then the elevator takes off. And, uh, it, you know, the elevators always seem to take too long in these situations yeah. when you're in a hurry and you've got something that's ticking. Um, 
Though Actually, they, you don't they, know it's ticking. Only, only Exit would know. Because she's the one with the enhanced audio. Yeah. So, <laughs> you're not aware that the suitcase is ticking. I'm not even ready. <laughs> Does the elevator uh, play Gerfemi Panema in Russian? No, because it plays... Um... Jirafa is Russian. <laughs> It plays Eurobeat, like uh, soft Eurobeat, if you can believe that. Kraken is riding. <laughs> in Metallica done in Muzak. <laughs> um, as you're going up, uh, the guards like, haven't I seen you somewhere before? Would you believe that I have this this kind of a face? Like I'm an everyman. <laughs> Says the guy with the red face. Yeah, the guy with the red face. Dead like, muscles. Right. <laughs> and just as he's about to say something else, the elevator dings and the doors open. You are greeted to... It's a reference that only me, that only me and my wife would get. It looks like the Canfor building, but you don't know that. Uh, <laughs> strictly Prince George, strictly my hometown. Uh, it's, you know, it's kind of like a generic, you know, sort of receptionist. It could be, this could be a doctor's office. This could be a lawyer, like a barrister. This could be, um, you know, an ad agency. Everything only... from AKA catalog. Yeah, pretty Circa much. Pretty much, it's like you're... Five. The only thing that makes you realize that this is Giraffa is A, the giant long-necked um, GRAF-3 uh, construction drone. It's a really popular model. It's what they kind of base their whole company around. Uh, they've got a, a, a scale model of it just outside the the, the glass opening there, mm. Acme Architects. Um, and the judicious use of orange. Like, it's almost hurts the eyes. Um, you step out of the elevator, and um, you hear from the reception area, Welcome to Sharafa, how can I help you? And he's like, "Hello, uh, I, 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 I am a new hire. They told me to come to this floor, and uh, I, I, I don't know, mail room or or maybe maybe washing. I don't know. They told me to come here to to get a job, so something low level to uh, claim the corporate ladder." All right, give me a body stealth roll, please. <laughs> okay. It should be good because I put points into that, but after the last time, I'm not <laughs> uh, so sure anymore. 15. Because um, I think I have minus two because of the widow draft. Widow draft yeah, the uh, withdrawal. From Black um, you turn around and Chester is right there. And he's like, Kraken, what what are you doing here? You don't work here. I started working here. Who is Kraken? I don't know any Kraken. Okay, um, give me a body endurance roll as you try not to sweat. <laughs> fear sweat <laughs> endurance 6 13 you manage to hold yourself a little bit until um you're like oh yeah, I start in the mail room and Chester's like but that just got automated, and in your panic, you drop the suitcase. 
<laughs> and it opens. You're not sure what exactly happened. One second, you're worried that the lady behind you is about to call security. The next, you hear a boom. And there's glitter and confetti everywhere. What's the color of glitter? Oh, the, it's all sorts of colors. It's it's orange, it's it's green, it's yellow, it's purple. It's just and it's just flying everywhere. The and Kraken you... is is started to jump in the glitter like a little girl. And then he Oops, sprints. Wrong, wrong briefcase. <laughs> yeah. And then he tries to sprint to the uh, fire exit. Okay. I don't know um, if there, there is a fire exit. Maybe perception? Uh, yeah, perception, because you've got to look through all that yeah. glitter, because it's it's persisting in the air. Yeah, As no, you're doing it's that, in his eyes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's your, is, you have it's realized nice. now. Yeah. You're not used to this. Oh, God. What is this feeling? I don't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one moment, perception. It's in awareness. Uh, yes. 13. Um, <laughs> you you stumble so around, and you can hear... Chester going, no, 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 no. There's a visit today. You don't understand. Artemis, you son of a bitch. Ah! You hear him just drop to his knees as you finally find the fire escape. <coughs> and you crash through the, the door. The glitter follows you in this sort of the drafty mm. swirls. And you can hear Chester swearing and, you know, just, no, no, I'm so screwed. Kraken uh, is very pleased with himself. And so, yeah, you, you make it down the, um, you make it down to the bottom of the stair, to the fire escape and Red Death is standing there and he's like, you look awfully Sparkly. Yes, like a vampire from the twenty tens. Okay. <laughs> it was a glitter bomb. They they will have a, a corpo visit today. And Chester sold me. Oh, that's terrible. And uh, we're probably going to hear about it. Yeah. Okay. And also, they they had uh, uh, the, that that firm that took away magic was doing security for them, and I think he recognized my face. So that's another fun thing that. Oh, that's not bad. good. Yeah, but we did it. Ray, um, let's get you back to home and cleaned up. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, um, it as you guys make it out of the alley, um, Shane meets you because he knew better. He heard that boom and he got the hell out of there. So you guys go back to the precipice, um, right around the time that Magic and Exit are about to leave for the afterlife. So now, finally, everybody's together. I mean, what? Yay! <laughs> so, you see magic is... Actually, I don't remember what you guys looked like at this point. I know that you got dressed up, but I don't remember how. You go first. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I, I was thinking about going, what did she do this time? Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, she looks honestly like she's from uh, 
one of the Midwest states. Uh, so she's put on um, something actually very similar to the shirt that I'm wearing, except she's tied it in the front. She's changed her hair to red, and it's in pigtails. Uh, she has freckles now. Uh, her eyes are probably like a blue or a green mix. Okay. And, and we look exit. like the least likely pair to be walking into a club together because Exit has put her hair up. She's changed into a... I call it more of a bralette than a shirt. It's very low cut, quite cropped. Um, she has actually put on makeup mostly eye makeup but she's she's obviously not trying to draw attention to her face she's put her hair up into like a high ponytail with like face framing like you know like the two pieces mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and she's wearing She's wearing, like, black leather pants that are tight, but surprisingly easy to move in. So you guys come t uh, back to, you see um, Shane and Red Death. And a very, very sparkly, besuited kraken. Um, like, Red Death is, like, standing, like, three or four feet off from the other two, because he's literally trying to avoid kraken's glitter. Uh, Seeing you all dressed up, Kraken would say, Are you going to a club? I am so glittery that I want to go to a club. Exit just slowly turns to magic. <laughs> magic is doing the same exact thing, turning to exit, like, uh, <laughs> trying not, like, uh, shoot, now a uh, plan needs to change a bit. Um, I. They can just tell him to stay. <laughs> he would stay like a puppy. It's not even that. She's just like. She wants to, like, bring Kraken along almost as a diversion because of all of the <laughs> glitter. That's her thought. <laughs> Exit's concerned is he's. He's quite recognizable. Like, his skin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's her concern. It's in his dead face. It's a dead giveaway. Yeah, it, it's that face. And yeah. she is more so like, if we go with him and he gets recognized, they're probably going to take a closer look at me. And me. You look totally different. Yeah, we could, but facial structure still the oh, same. That's fair. We could find. Uh, he doesn't hear it, but uh, uh, above the table, we can get him a mask or something. Maybe gloves? <laughs> Maybe she's. Like, she's... Yeah. So. I f we're talking <laughs> not in character. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like Exit and Magic are talking with their eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the, but the glitter would be a great distraction. <laughs> Honestly, you know, it's your decision. I mean... Kraken is just standing and laughing like I am now. Perfect <laughs> disco ball. 
We could get him like a shiny, like reflective mask that he can still see through. Yeah. And, and then just send him onto the dance floor and let him, you know, bop out. Right. Magic, you're a fancy kind of gal. Do you mm-hmm. happen to have any sparkly gloves? Uh, in, in her bed. Ba- oh, absolutely. She would. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. My, my concern is quite recognizable even just by the skin. You don't see that very often. True. So, like I say, mask, sparkly gloves, would bring together a very cohesive and discreet outfit. Agreed. Um, and well, she will... discreet in the sense identity. <laughs> mm-hmm. Discreet. Um, yeah, she'll look through her bag. Uh, and she probably has like a couple of different masks, honestly. <laughs> Just over the year that years that she's collected because of red. Um What is any of it gonna fit Kraken's face? If it fits red, Deb, it probably will purposes fit. Will say yes. <laughs> I'd also like to remind you guys that Kraken looks like he took like fifteen seconds to get dressed. Yes. Like it's he amazing. Looks but let me fix your tie. Okay. And <laughs> but they look great. <laughs> she's gonna make it. She's gonna tie his tie real nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll say that you guys can easily just make him look like a passing grade, as opposed to at least he tried. Yes. And uh, in this time, what why are they? I- Trying to fix his clothes, uh, Kraken would send a message to here to ask him for rainbow because I know you have that one, one appeal and you were friendly with Kitty and I'm going on a mission to the club and I'm all sparkly and I need help. I need rainbow. Yeah. Um. I totally just sat there expecting Kevin to say something. Um, <laughs> but he's not here. Um, the The response you get back is kind of a, uh, where will you be? Uh, where will we be? Uh, the afterlife. Oh my goodness gracious! And he like Squeals like a fa- one direction fun girl from me, me, me to one direction. The afterlife, that's amazing. Now I totally need, need rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, like just so happy, like kid and a sugar rush. Now he's like out, pump up, jumping in place. It's Kraken's excited. Magic is going to lean over to exit. This is still a good idea, right? <laughs> you will. <laughs> this is still a good idea. Yes. If you say so, I'll go with it. But yeah, uh, magic will absolutely give Kraken like a mask uh, that does cover the whole face, and a pair of yeah, let's just say red sparkly gloves, <laughs> because considering who they would have been for. All right. So Kraken is dressed up like the Disco time. King of Night City. <laughs> um, you guys head to the afterlife. None of us look like we should be entering that club together. Absolutely not. You, none of you look like you're actually supposed to be at that club. Um, we'll get to why in a second. Um, 
so the afterlife is located in an old morgue it frequently changes location but it is the premier club in night city can um, i red act the leather pants for a black leather skirt yes she's very works. practical but she still has nice things mhm mm so as you, she's you very know. exposed so people should not be paying any attention to her identifiable <laughs> features yeah between the three of you like none of you look like you should be here you're when you come up to the club you see um you know various punks kids who look you know barely out of high school trying to look hard um you see two cops kind of conversing to each other exit you pick up them talking about a perpetrator who's inside but they're not allowed in because it's against the rules um exit does look like a goth girl exit so a little bit more in tune to the the vibe um with the exception of these you know i guess posers hanging by the door um everybody that's kind of mulling around having a smoke what have you they're pretty hardcore edge runners um a few of them exit you actually recognize as people that have done jobs for bones uh there's steam pouring from the vents you know glow in the dark graffiti as you walk in and as you get to the door a massive ogre of a man stands between you and the door a name tag stuck to his stained white shirt says hello my name is gav his one cybernetic eye glows red and he blankly looks you all over and stops at first magic and then kraken we don't do costume night there, Mum. If you must be thinking it of that club down the street. Oh, they're with me. And she gives, like, a cheeky wink and a smile. And uh, Magic just looks over with the saddest of eyes. My, my friend here is bringing me in because I... My boyfriend just broke up with me. I'm cracking this up. Oh, it's really sad. Hello to you too. Hello we to just you want too. Use real sparkly. You know that. That's the idea. Okay. There's no fighting at the afterlife. Miss Rogue says yes. that you're here for drinking or you're here for biz. And no randoms. Now is you for letting in or throwing out? It's I no think I fighting. The last part. Is you for letting in or throwing out? No, you don't please need to let worry about us. That was not Exit's voice. You don't need to worry about us. We're all professionals. You can magic. You can see the gears grinding in Gav's head. It's like he's he expects a certain level of clientele, and you guys don't fit the bill, and he doesn't know what to do. But you're sticking around like you're supposed to be here, but you don't look like you're supposed to be here. So he and Miss Rogue hasn't told him to say do anything about that when people come in and they're looking all weird. But I buried Rogue. Uh, I, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't know the type of dress. I'm I'm real new to this city. Uh, and he's he's distracted, very distracted, between the way Exit looks, the way Magic looks, and the way Kraken is um 
He's like, oh, just wait a second. And he Something presses his finger compute. to his ear. And he starts... You can see his mouth moving, but all even exit here is a static. He's talking to somebody, but you're not sure what he's saying. No fighting at the afterlife, Chumbas. And he sit, sort of walks to one side and opens the door, and he's like, just try not to piss anyone off. Thank you. I hope you have a great night. That no. wasn't her voice. I'm out of it. <laughs> he just yells in happiness and runs in like a kid in, in the arcade. They, my friends really need this. Strange world we live in. Indeed it is. Have a great night. And Exit's kind of just going to link arms with magic. Yeah, magic takes um, absolutely playing into, like, the best friend. <laughs> you guys walk into the bar, and it's... As soon as you walk in, what you can see why Gav was so confused. Everyone here looks like they're here to do biz. Like, it's shadowy corners. You see, like, like hard asses just sitting around drinking beers. Um, there's a couple of tiger claws in the corner singing karaoke. Um, a handful of Arasaka mercs are sitting in the corner brooding you know all black and red and badass um you even see a couple of johnny car johnny rotten carbons at one table their backs to you but you know you there's no mistaking three identical black you know, three identical people <clears throat> um the bar itself is pretty much almost as soon as you walk in um you basically come through a little S curve from the door and it's right there. <clears throat> There's neon lining the floors, making it easy to move around. Uh, the walls themselves, um, you can see the, uh, the births for the different morgues, um, for the morgues, the bodies. Um, some of the tables are actually repurposed gurneys. Uh, Some of the like booths line the far side of the room. Privacy screens hiding some of the biggest movers and shakers in Night City. The beating heart of the street lays bare before you. Welcome to the afterlife. There's a middle-aged guy tending bar. He's pretty nondescript, bald, you know, he's got a kind of a biker beard, about average height, um, with the exception of his right arm. It's stylized to look like it's made of chunks of rock crete. Uh, let me just pause them out. Show to players. Yeah. Ooh. He stands there polishing a glass. When he sees you walk in, he laughs, uh, waves over one of the servers, and hands him some money, and then turns back to you and waves you over. I'll never not love the look of newbies. Come on, first drinks on the house. You know, I feel like they should really have a posted dress code. We had no idea. This is the street lady. Style over substance. Reckon is doing uh, the tourist thing. If, yeah. if not the mask, then uh, he would be mouth agape or visible, but it's n not visible in the mask, but the body language says it all. Yeah, He's just taking uh, it all in. And you magic definitely is... have the look of a tourist. Um, yeah. When people, uh, like when you sort of like get within a couple of feet of them, they kind of just sort of turn away. 
so they you know you don't see the yeah. gun entry. He, he's not looking at the faces of people. He, even it in his. Oh, they state, can't tell that though. You got a mask on, remember? Yes. Oh, that's right. So, they just see some guy with a. What mask did you give him? Um, mirror. Yeah, it's a mirror. Uh, oh. like just kind of, kind straight... of like Daft Punky. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, all right. I like that. I can that. Been glitter. Yeah. <laughs> you see him kind of like blue man grouping his way around the yeah. uh around the bar. And Kraken would go to the bar and say to the bartender, You look so cool with this arm. Re- really great stuff. Thanks, it's a custom job. So care to sit? Uh I never say no to a drink. I always wanted to visit this place. Even in the old country, everybody was telling the stories of of the afterlife. Good to know that we're famous. Exit and Magic, do you guys sit? Yeah, and Exit just crosses her legs. With a like, single... With her... Like, just yeah, kind of hand on the bar, just looking. Yeah, <laughs> even with a costume that doesn't look in place, you are completely like melding into the crowd. Uh, with a single gesture, the bartender lays out three glasses for you guys. He looks at Kraken and pulls a tequila old fashioned with a splash of beer and a chili garnish. I can tell a guy like you needs no education on the man himself. Enjoy your Johnny Silverhand. Magic gets a Molly Millions, a murky burgundy drink that has a taste like razor wire. It's energizing and goes down smooth. When you drink yours, he says, it's named it for the first razor girl. She pulled some crazy gigs back in the day. You should look her up. Exit is given a Mr. Bones glowing bright green, smoking, and served in a martini glass. It pulses like a heartbeat when she picks it up off the bar. It's surprisingly fruity. Bones stopped his heart on live TV to take the record from Adam Smasher for most converted Borg in Night City. It was quite the big deal. I'm surprised Saburo Arasaka let it happen. It's quite the man, isn't he? If you want to call him that. Speaking of, are you guys here to see him? Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for somebody to help me find somebody. Um, if we could talk to Mr. Bones, that would be great. See if he's not busy or something. Hey, Franco, go check to see if the Skelly Boy is ready. Yes. Molly Millions is a throwback. I did that on purpose. Um, to For the record, since I forgot to mention it, uh, in the afterlife, in order to get a drink named after you, you have to die. And you have to die in a particularly awesome way. Oh, and Mr. Bones kind of technically... He technically uh, died. Because he stops his heart. Yep. So he got in a technical And he was on it. live TV. <laughs> millions of people watched it. Saburo Arasaka Amazing. probably didn't like the fact that his boy got his uh, title taken from him. But oh, the bark, when you're, the bark. When it's just going to uh, look Adam like lean to magic and go, Bones might be able to help find this person. Hopefully. He has a lot of connections. He's been uh, feeding me them for a while, so. It takes a couple minutes. Um, you know, obviously, if you're here for the a- if you're here for the afterlife, you're here to do biz. So, you know, obviously, Bones is seeing someone. While you're sitting there at the bar enjoying your drinks and enjoying the vibe, um, 
the bartender, he, you know, he, he kind of sticks around. You know, he still, you know, handles other people's drinks, you know. A poof of glitter floats by. Yeah, it's just, it's just in the air around Kraken. You know, he kind of sparkles when he walks. Kraken has kind of said that he doesn't have rainbow because drinking, uh, washing down a rainbow with uh, Johnny Silverhand will be, would be amazing, but maybe some other time. Yeah, um... Um, she's gonna, like, lightly get his attention and go, Do you have any other recommendations for me? I think I'd like another. Well, let me just think here. He kind of thinks about us. Because he, he, he watched you guys enjoy your drinks. Like, he definitely paid attention. Yes. Totally hmm. enjoy He's like, did I read the vibe right? Yeah, just, how did you guys enjoy your drinks? Oh, you know, it was amazing. Yeah, you you read me perfectly, even with the mask. <laughs> Nothing like this where I'm from. I could hope not. Better than any of the drinks I've had elsewhere. That's what I like to hear. She gives him a smile. Yeah. Um. He mixes a. Uh, you know, a couple other drinks for you guys. They're along the same veins. Um, each one comes with its own story. You know, this person, you know, died parachuting off of the top of Arasaka Tower while being chased by drones. This person kicked it, you know, being chased by the NCPD. Uh, this guy took out, you know, three max tack experimental mechs while dosed up on some drug thought he was talking to a cat it was crazy should have seen it on the news <laughs> i think i know i knew that guy or that Is it's guy. just gonna like very lightly elbow kraken yeah at the end of that story kraken hears a meow but when he looks to where he hears the sound there's nothing he's just Um, it's about this time that uh, a um, envelope gets passed under Kraken's hand. He doesn't see the person who gave it to him, but when you open it, it's a couple of pills of rainbow and a little, like, spray bottle. And then... A note that says package delivered H. Okay. He would uh, take out a oh, 20 Eddie bill and get another Johnny Silverhand. I've got a bomb. I don't, I just have to write this. Yeah. And, and he would t take the rainbow and, and wash it down with a drink. Very bad idea. Don't do it, kids. <laughs> It's it's a fictional RPG game, and I can yeah. do stupid stuff. Don't do it in real life. Yeah. Drink Never responsibly, that. kids. I wrote. Yes. Uh, so yeah, you, you down the rainbow, and it's... You feel amazing. Like, it's better than the first time. Yep, <laughs> alcohol's bad for you, but fictional drugs. Uh, <laughs> you, it's better than the first time. Like you're the seeing. The Dow does provide. Yeah, the Dow provides. Yes. Uh, actually, yeah, that's what it says. That's what it said on the card. The Dow provides. Um, it's so funny. Yes, be because thank you for that, Rogue. That was great. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, so basically the the neon lights lining the floor are now like rainbows. You kind of look like you're in a Mario Kart level. Uh, Rainbow yeah. Road, I'm here again. Yeah. Uh, the music 
it, it's hard to describe, but it's almost like you hear new frequencies within the music. Like they're all new songs, even though it's you know the same song you've heard a hundred times. You know, sees the music and hears the colors. Exactly, you are experiencing life on another plane of existence. Magic and exit, you see Kraken just sort of like surreptitiously put a pill in his mouth and down his Johnny Silverhand. And then you hear this woo, and Kraken just starts to float. He's just like the the ebb and flow of the bar itself is now Kraken's ebb and flow. Y you've lost him. Well, he's having fun, and it he quite fun. literally outshines both of us. Good distraction. All right, so it did work. Uh, Good idea. It's about Good. this time you get a a tap on your shoulder. You see a nondescript, non-binary person holding a uh, holding a waiter's plate. Oh, my brain has forgot the word. Um, and they go, hey. Mr. Bones is ready to see you now. He's in the, the back corner over there. Thank you. Have a good night. Matakandia. Have a great night. And just disappears into the crowd. As we're approaching, exits like nothing. Don't overreact. Don't overreact. <laughs> I don't. I don't plan to. I'm talking to the audience. <laughs> So you walk up to the booth, um, the skull kid that's kind of like standing bodyguard um, doesn't respond, but it's kind of hard to tell under the helmet. Uh, they move off to one side. Finally, I'll shut up. Um, he, you know, pulls the privacy screen back. Bones is busy talking to somebody. And it's like, I told you coming here was a great idea. I've already got new clients. Hey, how's it? What the fuck? <laughs> uh, come on in, new client. Hello, it's lovely to meet you. Privacy screen closes. <laughs> and hear she a, just uh... gives him like a calm nod, like that could have been bad. But it wasn't. <laughs> Of all the places in Night City you go undercover, you choose the afterlife. I was a little bit creepy. Are you here? Did Kraken come with us? Um, yes. He, okay. he will come. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say he did. You didn't see him following. Smile you. Kitty? He's following Smile Kitty. Smile Kitty is on Exit's shoulder. Yes. Yeah. yeah, like you didn't see him like get up from his his stool like when you you left him there, he was spacing yes. but when the door closes, he's right there right between <laughs> you two as if like he never just <laughs> faced it. Yeah, so he talks and you <laughs> <laughs> Kind of a strange place to go undercover What's going on? Magic. We need to prove that Red is not the psychopath, psycho killer that they're making him out to be. And apparently, one of the few people that can prove that is here. At this bar. Wait, what? Do you remember the individual that you've been giving me information about, Fade? Yeah. The... The guru, mystic master guy. He's apparently here. 
right now. Bullshit. Everything I have leads here. You guys just fuck off for a sec. And he, you know, the other three people you exit, you don't remember their names off the top of your head, but these are Bones as like other lieutenants. Like just big names within his organization. Um, there's a solo, there's a, a med tech, and um, you think you recognize a max tac badge on the third guy. Do no, they wouldn't really recognize me. I'm undercover. <laughs> She didn't really bother to learn their names, but she's it's, she's aware of their existence. Yeah, it's like you guys don't run in the same circles at all. Mm-hmm. Like Bones like has unless so many... they are important to me and my work, I don't bother. Yeah, and that's how they kind of treat you. Like you're not involved in their work, so they have no reason to talk to you. Bones gets you guys to Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Larry, Curly, and Mo. Uh, he motions for you guys to sit down and um, presses a couple of buttons on the table. The uh, dancing girl that was up there, it was a 3D, you know, hologram, gets replaced by a map of Night City. Um, there's, you know, a couple of different skulls in di- various places around the map that you guys recognize to be the locations of his um, his different clubs. Is the map dancing? Uh, di- for Kraken, definitely. Yeah, for Kraken, it's it's doing all sorts of weird shit. Map is um, dancing to like Kukera. The map is doing the worm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And then after after that, a couple of like red dots kind of pop up, and he's like, "These are all the places I've seen fade since a while." There's not a lot. There's like maybe four. You're telling me he spends time here? Apparently, this might be where he gets most of his clients. Uh, sneaking biz is not good. Um, I don't want to creep on, on him. He's the best assassin in Night City. But I do need some way to try and identify him. That's kind of why I'm here you, if we do you have a face? Nothing concrete. And oh. <laughs> Hold on, I'll be right back. Took Dude, long I am the my... GM now. <laughs> This power. I'm exit. There we go. Yeah, that that happens occasionally. My camera decides to yeah. cark itself. Take a break. Yeah, take a break. Um, it, it, it has a union. I need you to try and record faces in the afterlife right now. I record everything I see. Can I see that? And she... The memory chip is usually located just behind the ear. All right. She's going to take the memory chip. All right. You hand it to Bones. He uh, slips it into his own, which he he puts it in the back of his spine. Um... 
and you can see his that has pretty much all of her yeah he's he's only like, he's on only it. curious about the last like yeah friggin 15 minutes which is uh, wonderful oh that's a lot of faces okay um no 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 what's he doing here no and no exit i will say she was taking like a good look yeah well i mean with with brain dances you can pause them right so yeah <laughs> after a few minutes uh bones pops the chip back out and hands it back to you and he goes I don't know which one it could be. There's a couple of faces here I don't know. It's not the bartender. That's not his gig. <clears throat> but I'll spend more time here to see if certain faces keep showing back up. I'm just warning you. Do you sure you want to find this guy? He's the only one with answers, right? About Red? Yeah. Exactly. And if we can prove that Red isn't a psycho... Psycho? Then maybe... At least part of that bounty will go down. Well... On that front... We may have a different problem. He hits a couple buttons again on the table, and the um, the news comes up, and the it says Red Death Killer identified, and it's a picture of Steve. Well, that's not good. Well, that's even worse. They, when they talk about him, they don't say his name. They give his serial number and they talk about how he has an Arachnos uh, Arasaka special um, special operations body frame. It talks about how he served uh, for Arasaka and it, it, it plays up like, at this point, you can tell it's kind of an Arasaka commercial because it talks about how he uh, worked behind enemy lines. You know, he was a saboteur, uh, did all sorts of operations to help defend Night City from Militech in the 20s. Um, but it also says he is armed and extremely dangerous. And advises people that if they see him to avoid at all costs, um, he will kill you if given a chance. And then it goes to shots of various crime scenes where you see various very dead people. Some are rotten johnnies. Some appear to be mercenaries. Having uh, seen the footage... Like from the cameras in, I guess the the frat house. Yeah. Do, are there any of these that don't look like Steve's. like his work? Most of them do. Um, efficient knife work. Um, uh, attack weapons of opportunity. You know, like he'll pick up somebody else's gun and use it. Um, the frame thing. One or two oh, nice. are very clearly just either copycat kills or they're blaming it on him. Um, those are the ones that don't fit the pattern. Um, most of the targets are private military or appear to be. They're not Rotten Johnnies. They look like Solos. They look like... Um, well, Mercs. Seeing how the, all this Kraken would say, 
and we put so much hard work into saving Big Red's life. That's why we were out for a week because we got banged up while getting meds for Big Red. He said that was there was weeks. some. Yeah. So yes, he was out bar. for a week. Yeah. It was like some bar that they uh, went to. And if we uh, prove to him that. Big Red is alive. I think we could, we can get those two love birds together. Do you know uh, about their favorite bar, Mr. Bones? Oh shit! <laughs> the only bar, a Militech Outrider, and an Arasaka Spider could meet in the same place is Totentans. Oh my god, my second favorite place that I wanted to visit. Magic this is the best day. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bones clocks your fear. Exit is calm as usual. Yeah, it's... And second um, is ecstatic. Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's the full range of emotion. Yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, Bones clocks your very obvious fear and he puts his hand on your knee. Are you okay? Everything I know about Totentans basically is that you go there to either murder or get murdered. There, there, There is no option. It's a pretty harsh bar. Um... Oh, it's... Hold on, let me spell that it's, for you It's there. kind That's of... It. Um, I just want to write it down word. correctly. Token times. With an eight. <laughs> okay, that wasn't what I thought at all. Yeah, it's uh, it's an industrial bar. They usually... Token Tans is another one of those places that um, kind of moves around. Yeah, uh, it's currently the in place. the upper marina, which is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Um... But it's a it's a Cromer bar. It's the kind of place that people go to to fight. And the reason why people go there to die is because they don't call trauma team. They don't stop fights. And it's one of those places where if you look like meat, you're prey. And magic in her, you know, kind of Daisy Duke sort of <laughs> get up. Um, she definitely looks like meat right now. Torque intense. <laughs> uh, I know Red's gonna have a fucking field day. Yeah. 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 Both of them said it, so I one after another, so I felt like I had to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the three of you should go alone. Definitely not. No. Even I know that. We need Shane and Red for this. Yes. Yeah. Boss, two more things before I forget, because I'm high and I might forget. I'm very sorry. I don't want to uh, don't want to walk on your words or anything. The second thing is uh, Golden Tigers, Mr. Viper is suited for now. It's He's happy with us because we got him a journey to um. torture and scared a little and the last thing is I got if you want some vengeance on the Rotten Johnnies I got some uh, illegal data under the bar uh, I showed it to exit already we can uh, like uh, do some vengeance for the bar they destroyed for you and he would uh, send the bar ledger to uh, Mr. Bones 
Um, Bones actually looks to exit and he's like, I'm going to let you handle that one. What? I like your style. Um, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say Viper is happy. More so that he's come to respect me. I don't think he's capable of happy. Me neither. No, just... But there's respect there. He wanted That's to do rare. war. Now he doesn't well, do war right now. You we know me, some... Mr. Bones. That's why I'm you're my favorite. So. It's not much, but it's honest work. Stick around. Enjoy the drinks. We'll figure out Toten Tans another night. Yes. Good idea, and I got some guns for you, because I didn't Ooh, protect your guns. And he would give all the guns he wanted to sell to Mr. Bones, because he still thinks he owns <laughs> Mr. Bones' guns, because um, he didn't protect his guns. Yeah, he's going to give you... Actually, he, he doesn't... He doesn't want money, because he doesn't take, I owe you. I didn't he doesn't give you money, guns. but he pays for your guys' drinks tonight. Okay. And you guys get to enjoy the company of Mr. Bones and his the entertainingness of that. You guys talk or you guys watch him talk to all sorts of people. He talks to cops that are totally not cops. Um you see him making phone calls to other fixers. Um he entertains a few a few edge runners here and there and sends them off on gigs. <laughs> Jack is there. <laughs> he went back to he, he does get around. I mean 2070 or yeah, he'd only be about 50 by this point. He'd be totally payable, yeah. Yeah, Jack's totally looking for more ghosts. Um and we're gonna close out the night like Wait. this. Oh, sorry? I'd say while we're still in the office with privacy, this was one of the things that I wanted to find out, like, get sorted this episode so I'm not yeah, agonizing yeah. over it for another week. Okay. Um, magic. Are you... Are you able to decode or identify voices i have a voicemail and it could be two people um well either one of two people and i was wondering if you could take a listen for me absolutely um let me do you have uh samples from the two people that you're thinking it is well one of them's coltrane Okay, we have one of those. If it's not Coltrane, I know who it is. All right. I can absolutely do that for you. But if you need... If you need to hear the second voice, I'm sure I could dig it up. Yeah, uh... That would actually be so easy for her to do. Um, she's gonna find um, a clip from Coltrane and um, she's really searching hard for one of her father that she is willing like that do you draw from old memories or are you looking for news sources um because you've got the memory chip yeah she's searching through 
save data. Oh. Why they have to give me one right in the middle? Okay. Um, the memory, or the voice clip that you get for Coltrane is easy enough to find. I mean, it's pretty recent. Pretty recent. Plus, there's like news sources because he, you know, and a state's marshal shows up, you know, people kind of pay attention. That gets at least one interview. Um, not to mention all the times he screamed at you from his squad car. <laughs> uh, the other audio clip is of a man screaming at somebody. Just absolute abuse. Um, it's not that long, but it's pretty bad like probably the worst things you can say to somebody if you know them really really well um roll me a technique basic tech please 12 well she, i will say she was trying to look for something that wasn't that but because she couldn't find it she looked for so much bad stuff the least bad yeah, this was this is one of those mid rants when he's super drunk and they, he's not making a whole lot of sense, but still awful. Mm -hmm. um, the answer that magic comes back with is it's a um, seventy eight percent match to the second source with something you caught you could tell it was um digitized like it's not natural vocal cords there's little wavering in a real voice that doesn't translate when you get a uh, cybernetic larynx put in and that's what magic will tell exit i don't know which one i'm scoping for and that's where we're, where we're going to end it tonight. Can I just one, <laughs> one, one tiny thing to uh, to magic? Because uh, be, be, I cannot take the hundred uh, eddies that he got from the nomads and buy a therapy token for humanity loss, for classical therapy. And he would just say to magic, Magica, I uh, bought two therapy tokens, one for rehab, one for therapy. If I won't make it, uh, please uh, give, give those tokens to Tommy and Gina, because, because of me, their life is worse. So if I die on the job, this, before getting therapy, give it to them, and he would give like auto, uh, authority he would authorize magic as uh, a pe uh, close person in charge give her authorization for that uh, that's that just one thing i wanted to okay. do because he t trust magic to do that and he's got enough humanity to care for his team and to care for tommy and gina he doesn't care for chestnut but he does keep for <laughs> Tommy and Gina. Also, I will say, this is the most that anyone in this office has seen exit a moat. Yeah, she actually Her... seemed like a person for a couple seconds there. Yeah. Like, just her face kind of just drops slightly. Like, this, you can't tell if she's afraid, angry, you can't tell exactly what she's feeling, but it's, it's not positive. 
Uh, Reckon could help with basic tech. Uh, maybe he would roll better, but he's too high to know this that uh, exi- yeah, uh, exit is you're enjoying distress. the you're enjoying whatever's going on yes. on the hollow display right now. Uh, so yeah, that is where and we're gonna end it. Sorry. Um, I Exit just wanted to found out that she just got threatened to... by her dad. Um, I would like to thank everybody for playing tonight. Um, I know we're ending a little bit early, but I think she was hoping it was Coltrane. I can totally understand that. Yeah, that's that's a threat you can deal with. Um, yeah, I still like the idea that her her dad is Coltrane. <laughs> um. So yes, I would like to thank my players. Thank you, Sarah. Thank, thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Brill. You guys are awesome. Um, we did a I'm lot. Going to admit anything. that it's been it was really hard to write this episode in that. Well, it took two weeks to do it. So, um, thanks for putting up with my brain blockage. Oh, I'm not allowed to say that. Writer's block. <laughs> Writer's yes. block. I can call it writer's block. Um, thank you, can you, Kevin, call it whatever for you want. It's um, game. If you guys liked the show tonight, um, definitely uh, leave a comment. You know, leave a like, follow, all that fun stuff. Um, if you're watching on the VOD, uh, leave a comment in in the comment section. Um, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, you know, give me a dislike and leave a comment in the section telling me why you didn't like it. Um, we do read them. Um, you can like, come to Discord to talk to yeah. us. Head on over to our Discord and join that too. Um, we we get the chat for there. audience. We put a lot of memes there and we yeah. always put up notifications when we're streaming. We stream five nights a week ish, most of the time. Hello. We'll say that. Um, it's different stuff every night it's always fun it's always a blast um we definitely appreciate seeing you guys in chat um i'm sorry i didn't go two hours rogue um i know ikea furniture can be the devil uh good luck with it (laughs) um and it was lastly please be nice to each other and i mean that the world sucks right now and there's a lot of stress and the least you can do is be nice to people. Don't so. make it worse if you can. Exactly. Try. Have a good night. We love you. See you on Thursday. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Or a good morning in my case. Bye.